finally, McDonough emerges. Looks kind of tense. Hasn't fought in this high-profile atmosphere before. Keep that in mind. Walking into the fight of his life. Says this fight is like hitting Lotto. Well, he is getting $150,000, which he will probably put towards graduate school. He's either tense or angry. Maybe he's thinking about final exams. You think? Good point. Or a sonnet. Well, if you think Holyfield's a big test, try neoclassic literature and creative writing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he had to pass this semester, which got him closer to that degree at St. John's University. Nobody ever went to the hospital from creative writing. <laughs> and that's another good point. <laughs> Seamus McDonough, a man who can quote James Joyce and corresponds with an ardent boxing fan by the name of Norman Mailer. Well, he, he does look tense. You know, I mean, let's look at his face. I mean, he's got a glacial expression on his face. It's certainly not a happy expression, and uh, that may be his warlike mask, but at the, at the moment, he does look like he's thinking um, apprehensive thoughts. He's certainly feeling the butterflies in the stomach. And hearing it from his fans here. McDonough says he was inspired by watching the Holyfield Stewart fight back in November, seen here on Showtime. He feels he hits harder than Stewart and Michael Dokes, two men who gave Holyfield some problems. He'd been sparring with Stewart in the Catskills, getting advice as well from the Destroyer. Also sparred with Ricky Parkey, who was easily defeated by Holyfield, the first fight Holyfield ever appeared on, on Showtime. 19-1-1, 14 knockouts. Former Golden Gloves champ, rated number nine by the WBA. And here is the music, bringing in the number one contender, Evander Holyfield, undefeated. Lou Duba, the ubiquitous one, and the same stoic look before every fight on the face of Holyfield, totally focused, all business, no glitz, trying not to look ahead beyond Seamus McDonough to a title shot, which may have been the case against Alex Stewart. Well, Alex Stewart gave him a surprisingly good fight. Evander is a very focused fighter, but when he gets in a difficult night, he doesn't lose his patience. He just stays there as he did with Stewart. He didn't get discouraged. He knew he wasn't looking good, but... Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Main Events Monitor, in association with Madison Square Garden Boxing, presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., and the World Boxing Council, represented at ringside by Bob Bussey of Texas. The scoring for this bout will be done on a 10-point must system, and the officials assigned at ringside as judges are Vincent Renoni of the Garden State of New Jersey, and from the Lone Star State of Texas, Dick Cole, and also from the state of New Jersey, John Stewart. And the referee for this bout, he's from Hackensack, New Jersey, Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlantic City's Convention Hall by way of Donald Trump's Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino on the Boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds! for the WBC Continental America's Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the green trunks with white trim and weighs 211 and three quarter pounds. From Enfield, County Meat, Ireland. His professional record, 19 victories, 14 KOs, only one defeat and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Seamus. McDonough! And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks and weighing an even 210 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia. His professional record, 23 victories, 19 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated WBC Continental America's heavyweight champion, Evander, real deal, holy field. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I won a good, clean fight. 
and protect yourselves at all times. All right, shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Final instructions from referee Joe Cortez. Holyfield looks more streamlined. McDonough coming off a 10-round decision over Michael Greer. That was the toughest test to date for him. But now comes the final exam. Evander Holyfield. Round one scheduled for 12. And talk about starting fast. At least he came across there fast. He wants to get it started really fast. Just as we said. Look out! Down goes McDonough in a wrestling mode. Evander Holyfield with a takedown. That's no knockdown. That's upper body strength you're seeing on the part of Evander Holyfield. He just wouldn't be buffaloed. He just took him down with strength. McDonough very aggressive. He said he would just take it to Holyfield. Said he's not intimidated by Holyfield's robo-type body. He plans to just get in there and throw punches, and he'll eat punches to get punches. Right now, he's doing all right because he's doing all the punching. Holyfield is just patiently wearing, waiting for that adrenaline to wear off. He's not getting hit by many of these shots, certainly not any place it hurts. There's a solid left by Holyfield. Holyfield generally starts off slowly, but wears his opponents down with an accumulation of punches. Sometimes catches too many punches, as illustrated in the Dokes fight. Oh, left, and down goes McDonough! A sharp left uppercut, McDonough! With a flash knockdown, he got right up, though. That was right on the top of the temple. More of a hook than an uppercut. And it didn't hurt him as much as a flash, but you could see the punching power Holyfield in that first. There he goes again. And thump, he goes down, but that was a push. Just about the midway point of round one, a left set. McDonough reeling to the canvas. The second was not a knockdown. Now let's see if Holyfield airs it out and tries to finish him off. McDonough not known as a mover. He just sort of stands there, and he's going to have to move. Is he freezing now? Well, he started out well, and then as, as he felt the power of Holyfield, he went into a frozen kind of look, and he started running, and that will not help with Holyfield. McDonough comes back with a right. That left uppercut just missed by Holyfield. Holyfield is getting him in trouble with every good hook to the head. It is now just a matter of time. Oh, McDonough. Can he get through? McDonough almost went down. He stays up. Heading for the bell. McDonough hanging on for dear life here. One more knockdown and it's over. He made it through the first round. Now, Sheamus gets up a little frozen, and he's looking scared. So, therefore, anything that hits him pretty flush will knock him down. That wasn't even a good punch, and it was to the back of the head, and it knocked him down. Calm down and pick your shot. All right. We're out. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get that body. Get that body. Get that body. Round two, scheduled for 12. McDonough surviving the first round. He was knocked down twice in the opening round. And again, his only hope here is to try to punch out as he did at the very opening minute of the first round. But it's simply class that's telling here. It's two different class fighters here. 
one guy is ballroom brawling and the other guy is a fine scientific fighter. Finally honed, finally conditioned, and we're seeing prime Holyfield here. Now Holyfield working the jab. Control him with a jab. Suddenly he'll turn a hook off that jab. Cross the right hand, and down will go Shane. There has been a noticeable absence of body shots here. Holyfield had said, I want to work his body a little bit and get his hands down. He has not done that. The fans getting behind Seamus McDuddy can hear the chanting in the background trying to urge him on but Holyfield again. There's a combination by Evander Holyfield. There's that right hand that comes off the jab and he turns the hook off the jab. He can catch Seamus who's just leaning that way. I mean he's just ready for a left hook. There's another left by Holyfield. Oh McDuddy just being punished. He's got to start putting some punches together or else he is going to eat leather for what's left of the short fight. Things settling down somewhat here to the advantage of Seamus McDonough. It's a one way fight to this point, but Holyfield is letting him off the hook. Maybe indeed he feels like he needs this work. It certainly is nothing but a gym workout at this point. Well, we addressed that issue at the outset, and maybe that is the case, but he told us in a meeting yesterday that he is going for the early knockout. And so did Georgie Benton, his trainer, and so did Lou Duba, and so did everybody in this corner. Get him out of there as fast as you can is a message that was sent to Holyfield. When you have that many millions at stake, that's got to be the philosophy. Remember anything here, a broken hand, a cut, a broken nose, anything can set him back off a $10 million shot. So his backers have got to be very nervous as round two winds down with very little action compared to the first round. And that'll do it for the second round. Right here. Get that. You gotta punch, Seamus. You gotta punch. Now let's go. Punch. Don't stand there. You're in the move, punch, move, punch. Come on, I think you saw him and hurt him. Don't go kill him. Take him out of there. Take him out of there, right? That jab come right back with those combinations. Three, four point combinations. Right. Hands up the nine. So in case he comes running out after you try to kill with something, you know what I'm saying? Save it around. You go out there with this guy. You gotta have your hands up high so you don't try to skate. Let's go, champ. Come on. Let's do it this round. Let's do it. Come on. Let's go. Get that body. It is round three. McDonough. Surviving two knockdowns in the first round. Didn't go down in the second round. Banner Holyfield wearing the words blood salvage on his trunks. That's not his new nickname. He's still the real deal, but it's a phrase that is really contradictory to his personality. He is certainly a gentleman outside the ring as things open up once again. That's the name of a movie he's in. Combination by McDonough as he comes back. That's the only thing he can do. He must fight back. He must use both hands to try to keep Holyfield away. Down goes McDonough for the third time with that one count. It's a slip, a trip. There's a little trickle of blood coming from the side of uh, Seamus's left eye. It's right in his brow. Not big factor right now, just a nick. Holyfield was told to keep your hands up, jab, and use that combination, and let's get him out of there this round. Those were the orders from Luduba, and those were the orders from Georgie Ben. Cornerman of Holyfield. Did you notice Holyfield stumbled? And that got a rise out of the crowd. Holyfield bouncing around, looking very sharp. Duba's hollering from the corner. Double up the jab and is and 
and uh, as if on order from the master, he's doubling up that jab. Both of them landing on the brow of Sheamus. Ooh, that left by Holyfield to the midsection of McDonough. A little bit of a low blow there by Holyfield. Got away with it. Holyfield actually fighting a sort of lazy fight after that lazy first round and inactive second round. He's not really pressuring. He's not putting on pressure. Almost as if he's willing to be patient and take it as it comes. As we spoke of at the top of the show, if this goes on for very long, then the critics will start to say, hey, you can't do anything with this guy. What's he going to do with Douglas? What's he going to do with Tyson? So he must start to wake up and start to put pressure much more than he's doing now. Solid left by Holyfield. McDonough comes back. He is game. And the crowd exhorting him. That right was a grazer by McDonough. It didn't land on Holyfield's chin. But it is catching his attention. Oh, McDonough showing a lot of heart. Under 20 seconds in the third round. McDonough coming back from being knocked down twice in the first. Holyfield could not put him away. Another sharp shot to the ribs by Holyfield. Now going to the head as the bell sounds to end the third. I'm on to the body. You understand? I'm on to the body. Now listen, you gotta close that gap with this guy. You understand? Don't be too far with him. Push him with the jab, push him with the jab, stand a little closer to him, turn him to that long stuff. Do that stuff. Around the head. Up the middle. The fighting spirit of McDonough, which is what he's got to show. Sheamus has got to put those punches out there to keep Holyfield away. And of course, in spurts, he does that. But the majority of the times, he's eating leather. Let's look at it from a different angle. See that broad back and a barrel chest that he's got? He's got to use that. He's got to try to out bully and out strengthen Holyfield, but he just simply cannot do it. And it's round four. It is scheduled for 12, the WBC Continental America's Heavyweight Championship. Third defense by Holyfield. Does your scorecard look right now? Dismal for Sheamus. It's 30 to 25 for Holyfield. I gave that first round a 10-7 because of two knockdowns. Again. through the ropes. I don't think he can get up. He almost landed in Dr. Doggett's lap. That's it. It's all over. Joe Cortez waves it up. Seamus McDonough. 44 seconds in the fourth round. Evander Holyfield remains undefeated. Now 6-0 as a heavyweight, all by knockout. He's 24-0 with 20 knockouts. It's interesting, his wife Paulette is pregnant, expecting any day now, expecting a boy, and they plan to name him Ewin, as in Evander Wynn. Sure beats the pants off, E lose. Well, let's take a look at the fourth round. There's that devastating right, that thunderous right by Evander Holyfield. Setting things up. This will be the third time of the fight McDonough goes down and the last. Now McDonough tried his best to come back there with the right. Oh, what a shot. And through the bottom of the ropes went McDonough. Down on his back. There was McDonough's right. Didn't seem to phase Holyfield. And Holyfield lowered the boom. Let's see if we can get a better look at it here. A 
ferocious left by Evander Holyfield. The ring is just packed solid. McDonough is okay. A little smile breaks out as they show good sportsmanship. Here's Michael Buffer. Every time this bout comes to an end, at 44 seconds of the fourth round, the winner by knockout victory, his record now 24 and 0, 19 KOs still. WBC Continental America's heavyweight champion, Evander Real Deal Holyfield. Evander Holyfield with that bone jarring left, that flat Seamus McDonough. The number one rated heavyweight contender, Evander Holyfield. Here in the fourth round, 44 seconds, as he just knocks out Seamus McDonough. And McDonough had never been knocked down before. He got knocked down twice in the first round and then the last time in the fourth. Let's go up to the fight doctor right now, Ferdy Pacheco. Okay, are you satisfied with that workout? Good rod, good rod for my health and strength. You know, all the things are done for me. Yes, I was satisfied. I went out there and uh, not, I didn't get impatient. I went out there and fought him like George wanted me to fight him. All right. After that first round, when you had him down twice and you had him down by a throwdown twice, did you think that second round was very slow for you? You didn't it didn't seem to come out and put him out. Well, well, George told me to go out there, don't put myself in a in a panic position. That's the reason I didn't take him out the first round because I was really putting a little too much Man. pressure upon him. But uh, actually, I uh, told him to come out the second round, establish my jab. And uh, that the knockout is going to come if they're just taking time to be patient. You know what punch knocked him out? A left hook. A good left hook. We were waiting for you to throw that off, as off the double jab, and you threw it, landed perfectly. Did you feel it when it connected? That was the end. Well, you know, I, uh, we were, at the time we were trading punches. He got me a good punch, right in the lip, and I and my left foot followed right behind. And I, I hit him right on the chin. And I was expecting to go down because I did hit him on the chin. Does a fight like this do Evander Holy feel any good as far as preparing for Douglas? Oh, sure. He's prepared for three months, uh, you know, for this guy over here. And he did everything. All his gym work that, uh, that George taught him, he performed over here tonight. You know, he could open up right away. But we wanted him to box and take him out of there in good fashion. As far as Douglas is concerned, Douglas will get knocked out if he ever has the guts enough to get in the ring with him. And that's what we're looking for. The, the weight training, all that we saw you do there, it seemed like you could pick this guy up like a feather. He's a big guy, and you threw him down twice like a steer. Is well, that because of upper body strength? Well, he, uh, I caught him off balance. He, he ran in too close, and he got his feet under him, and it was just easy for me to, uh, to get him off balance. Do you feel much stronger because of the body training? Do you feel much more endurance because of it? Well, I feel more of a complete fighter, uh, a complete fighter. The weight training had helped me, and uh, in the previous time, it helped me too. And I think each and every fight, I'm getting stronger. Regarding the financial end, Kenny, uh, the manager, you are going to be doing money talks with Danny. Will a fight like this help you in your negotiation? Will it hurt you? Will they say, well, listen, this guy took him four rounds to get rid of this guy? Uh, no, definitely. It'll help us a lot because uh, yeah, everybody expected him to win, but he won big like he was supposed to. I mean, he was supposed to win big, and he did. So you're satisfied? I'm very satisfied. It's best he's ever looked. All right. Let's take a look and see if we can see a, a knockdown. Uh, we're trying to rack up our replay, and uh, you can. Here's the first of the uh, of the knockdowns. You can you can comment on it if you wish. Well, well, it was, uh, it was a good jab, and he was ducking down into the jab into a, a left uppercut, which uh, I knew when I watched his tape. He was he was dropping the head a lot, and I knew. I now knew. here's here's the second time in that same round. Watch your punch. Into the body, real good. You can comment. Well, actually, it was, it was the body shot that really hurt him. And, uh, and he got off balance trying to hit him with right hand. It was the right hand that I called him with going. going and here is the end of the fight, and maybe one of the prettiest left hooks you're going to throw in a long time. Well, you know, I would set him up. I was going to the body at first, and uh, and we trade punches. And uh, out of the right hand, then uh, he caught me right. Then I, I caught him off balance. It was a great left hook I threw. Uh, it was a nice clean one. But you know what? For a guy that they say was frozen, he was fighting back pretty good. He was yeah, throwing he was some fighting. shots. Well, I, I knew the guy would come out. He didn't have anything to lose, and, had a, and he had all the people pulling for him. And the guy came out and gave his all like he's supposed to. He's a fighter, and he proved that he was a fighter, and he came out and fought like a fighter. All right. I think uh, you've had a nice uh, evening's entertainment. You've certainly entertained us. And now it's what, September, you think, for Douglas? Hopefully um, I'm just going to go back and train and work out and be prepared for anything that come on. All right. Thank you very much. And now back to Steve Albert at ringside. All right. Thanks very much, Ferdy. 
live from the West Hall of the Atlantic City Convention Center on the boardwalk. Evander Holyfield, 44 seconds into the fourth round, knocks out Seamus McDonough. Lifting his record to 24 0 with 20 knockouts, 6 0 as a heavyweight. And now he will just continue to patiently wait and wait for his big shot at the title. A courageous Seamus McDonough with the fight doctor. They say you were frozen. They say you were scared that first round, but you came out like a bull. Did you feel frozen? You feel like, hey, I got to take this guy now. Well, I made the mistake of trying to knock him out, and uh, he's a great fighter, and he just don't knock out great fighters like Evander. Uh, I fought my heart out, uh, disappointed, but uh, I guess I'll learn from when I'll be back. Did you did you feel that you were outclassed? Did you, you sat there and you say, hey, wait a minute, this is a different level, like when you're playing with somebody just a little bit better than you are? Well, I got a hand on him. He's a good fighter. I uh, I did come out. I wasn't scared or anything. I just came out. It just all seemed to happen so fast. I guess the first time I've been in a big fight. Uh, I'll learn from him. I know I will. Um, I made the mistake of trying to knock him out. I thought I'd have him going in the third round. Try to knock him out, and it's not the right thing to do with a good fighter like Evander. Did you see the hook coming, or did that catch you completely by surprise? The one last one that knocked you out. Here's, here's the, uh, another look on our monitor. Keep watching our monitor as we talk. And, and you will see. You actually fight back very well. Feel free to comment. You're an English lit major. You see, you you got a great shot in. You got another great shot in. Well, they both. They both. And, and it was it, it was like e equal. But he didn't fight his regular fight. He went out to knock him out. He was supposed to box him for about three or four rounds. That's well, what his plan. Was. Well, it's difficult to box a guy that's a skillful boxer and is after you with a repetitive jab like that. Where do you go from here, and uh, what is your future in boxing? Well, we're back to the gym. As I said, it's experience for me. I'll be back. I'll be back. Very good. Thank you very much. And back to Steve at ringside. All right. Thanks, Ferdy. There is a great deal of uncertainty surrounding the heavyweight division and championship belt these days. It has undoubtedly been a most intriguing year for the heavies, a division that's still feeling the after effects of the Tyson defeat.